Everybody is, all thought is broken up into bits, like this nation, this country, this industry, this profession, and so on, as they can't meet, man. And uh, it's extremely hard to break into that. Now, uh, the, the second, but that comes about primarily because thought has developed traditionally in a way such that it claims not to be affecting anything, but just telling you the way things are. Therefore, people cannot see that they are creating a problem and then apparently trying to solve it. That is, see, let's take the problem, what problem do you like? Pollution the, the, or the ecology. See, the ecology is not in itself a problem. It works perfectly well by itself. It's due to us, right? Uh, it's a problem because we are thinking in, in a certain way by breaking everything up and each person's doing his own thing, right? Now, therefore, the ecological problem is due to thought, right? But thought thinks it is a problem out there and I must solve it. Now, that doesn't make sense because simultaneously thought is doing all the activities which make the problem and then there's another set of activities to try to overcome it. You see, it doesn't stop doing the things which are making the ecological problem or the national problem or whatever the problem is. You know, I, I tried to measure a little uh, short over around 200 times and I never reached to measure the reality of the coastline. In fact, I, I reached only the understanding that what I was actually measuring was defining myself more than actually what I was trying to define, that it was defining more the tools that I was using than the coastline that I was trying to encapsulate. So the first thing we have to do for in the long run is to look at our whole way of thinking, which has developed over so many thousands of years. I don't think it was the original way of thinking of the human race at all, but for many c complex reasons it came about. Now, uh, that means that people have to make a, uh, uh, they have to participate to make a cooperative effort to have a dialogue, a real dialogue in which we will <clears throat> not merely exchange opinions, but actually listen deeply to the views of other people without resistance. And we cannot do this if we hold to our own opinion and resist the other. It doesn't mean we should accept the other, but we have to be able to look at all the opinions as suspended, as it were, in front of us without carrying them out, without suppressing them. I think science has begun to replace religion as the major source of, my, of the world view. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, therefore, if science takes a fragmentary world view, it will have a profound effect on consciousness. Well, science is whatever people make of it. You see, science has changed over the ages, and it's different now from a few hundred years ago, and it could be different again. Now, there's no intrinsic reason why science must necessarily be measurement. This is a, another historical development which has come about over the past few centuries. It's entirely contingent and not absolutely necessary. If we can have a coherent approach to reality, then reality will respond coherently to us. <laughs> but nature has been tremendously affected by our way of thinking on the earth. The nature is now being destroyed. There's very little and left on the earth which wasn't affected by how we were thinking. The earth is one household, really. Yeah. <laughs> We're not treating it that way, right? So that's the first step in economics, is to say the earth is one household and all that it depends on. 
it's all one, you see. So uh, now the implicate order would help us to see that, to see everything unfolds, everything. <laughs> That everybody not merely depends on everybody, but actually everybody is everybody in a deeper sense. We, we are internally related to everything, yes. not externally related. Consciousness is an internal relationship to the whole. We take in the whole and we act toward the whole. And yes. that internal, whatever we have taken in, determines basically what we are. But the first, the major source of unhappiness is that we are incoherent and therefore producing results that we don't really want and then trying to overcome them while we keep on producing them. The question is... Hello, 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 hello everybody. Uh, today we are with the beautiful Maria Buitpate and I would say what she says about herself. She's uh, usually she says that she is an object designer, uh, but in the recent years uh, she gained uh, one more definition, which is the one of curator. She's also an, a PhD student, she's a mentor, she's a practicing designer, uh, and of course, uh, a curator. Hello, Maria, how are you? Hi, hi, I'm good. <laughs> you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, it, it's nice that spring is heating and it's getting warm and, and life yeah. is beautiful that way. Uh, I think that since uh, all the years that we spent in the Netherlands, um, I'm I'm extremely happy to see the sun every day. I don't know if you can say the same, Elijah. Oh my God, it's like uh, the spring was not coming at all. Just a few days are warm. It's... Just yeah. a few days ago. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. We have it for We for live a without for... sun. I mean, you can come whenever you want to enjoy the sun. You know that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask you, like you say that you're an object designer. Um, yeah. What, what is an object designer, Maria? Well, it defines that uh, it's, uh, it's broader than um, just simply product designer. And uh, in recent years, I wasn't so busy with real products. I was more in the in an academic field and also like doing my own practice so i mean it's just uh, when you meet random people that are not necessarily related with your context it's an, an easy way to explain you know like i design any kind of objects from a, from a glass to jewelry to furniture anything uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know, the materiality is important for me. Uh, I love, uh, I love uh, things, objects, materials. Um, they are important for me, so I don't know. And I, and I love being a designer. Uh, sometimes I get the question whether I'm an artist or a designer, but I, I, I stick to the <laughs> label of a designer. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, but I, I prefer prefer being a designer. Uh, so, but you say that you recently gained the, the one of curator? Yeah, like in, in uh, recent years, I had uh, possibilities to create some design exhibitions, which I enjoyed a lot. And it was totally new experience. And uh, I never thought that, that I would do something like this, you know? And then, and then suddenly you find yourself uh, really busy with, with this practice. And it's, it's great that, you know, like 
finally I can use all my contacts that I gained uh, since we studied and I wrote the also, it's funny how I started together with Vito Das Gatches, we started everything. And uh, of course, like the very first people that we contacted for the exhibitions, um, they were friends. Of course. My course mates, basically. Uh, I don't know, because our year was the coolest. <laughs> um, Anyways, so That's when same. you all agree, then you know you, you can contact uh, other guys uh, from Design Academy, let's say, or from, I don't know, close circles, and uh, you can say that, oh, listen, <laughs> this guy is participating, so maybe you would like to. And I graduated from Design Academy. <laughs> it's like a green light to, to get everything you want. <laughs> it is? It is in, it in is. Lithuania, it is? No, no, in general. In general, okay. in general. I think that the doors are way more open for us because we, we, we graduated from Design Academy. I don't know. I see it very, very useful. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a painful uh, trip, so at least uh, there's some something to get back. <laughs> I mean, you call it painful, yes, it was challenging for all of us, but at the same time, I know those two years, they were life-changing, I don't know, I'm, I'm so grateful, first of all, for the people that I met, very dear friends that are, I don't know, we, we keep contact till now, and um, I don't know, we, we, we really catch up what everyone is doing and I don't know I feel this community I agree I agree uh, yeah and it was just amazing to be I don't know to to have this uh, also just simply studying abroad in a small town where you have nothing to do basically there is no basically. cultural life and uh, yeah, you can fully merge into your own practice, just think about design all the time. And I don't know, all the time, what, what we were doing, talking during dinners, it was all about our practices and our, I don't know, passions about, um, I don't know, design and life and <laughs> so on and so on. So uh i in that time i think i really like you know stepped inside inside of myself or felt my inner self as a designer somehow um yeah i don't know i realized how i see the material environment uh, uh, how I feel it, how I can express it, uh, also where are my strong points somehow, how can I, I don't know, impress or tell something different. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that experience. I agree, I agree. Yeah. I think that it's, that's why I, I, I love that you're here also that we had in the past, uh, um, Rafael, Lucas and, and Naya. And we will have more people, definitely. Um, but I, I do agree that it was a very, it was a very strong experience in all the senses, and and it was also very enriching for me, um, at least for me. And, and that's why I wanted to ask you also um, something that I also asked them, and is more or less that since we met, um, if your design perspective changed, so, uh, or and it, if it did, uh, how it did, because definitely mine changed. <laughs> So, so I was wondering, uh, after like 10 years uh, that we met, how, how you evolved as a designer. And definitely now you're a designer and curator, so that's a huge evolution. But... You mean in those 10 years after the graduation, yeah. right? Well, 10 years. No, graduation was 2014. So, no, no, since we met. So, since the first day that we met, I don't know which day was that. But I'm sure that was very early. Uh, but uh, since then, do you remember actually mm -hmm. how, how you perceived design back then? Mm, 
they definitely broaden my perspective uh also seeing uh different practitioners also having great mentors which were i don't know some of them they were design stars at that time and in general we were in a hot spot <laughs> uh no just seeing how it really works uh, that is some something that is happening close by uh, that is nothing special it's just just happening there and uh yeah i learned from others a lot um also you know with with each uh, assignment with each project you you try different things and you you i don't know you develop your own language um and uh, yeah, I, I know it's funny that after the graduation, I did so many different things, went back and forth. And uh, well, after the graduation, I went back to Lithuania. But I'm just like sometimes looking back and thinking, did I do that before I studied master or after? <laughs> it couldn't be that I did it after. Like this kind of bullshit I did, you know? So I, I don't know. I wasn't. In general, I think I was uh, a bit too young uh, mm -hmm. to do the master. Uh, I didn't use all the possibilities afterwards. I didn't know actually what I'm looking for or how I could use my contacts or just in general being there at that time. Um, I don't know, I was just curious, wanted to try different things. Um, I was, of course, a bit naive, and uh, I wanted to go home for some reason. Uh, I don't know. And uh, and then I went. I when I went home, you 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 suddenly meet the reality. You you need to earn something, right, for the living. So you do some I don't know strange commissions that are not necessarily related with your. With your practice um well one good thing that i did i started teaching first nice. at the, the design college it was i think we graduated in 2014 so since 2015 i was already teaching and uh, yeah like i think it was meaningful and i discovered myself as a mentor that i that I can be a good uh, advisor or, you know, like uh, I can, like a, I can be a, a sensitive advisor. <laughs> that's that's something that I, I like that word for you, because uh, to be honest, since, since I know you, I, I, I can definitely say that you're a sensitive and, and a person and, and, and that translates to design very, very well for you. I think that for all the projects that I've seen for you, the relationship uh, within the senses also, but also with the sensitive part, it, it is very, very mm -hmm. much there, right? I mean, it's something that you do consciously also when you teach or it's only part of your personality that just like you cannot avoid. I don't know. I was raised this way. <laughs> <laughs> My mom told me how to. Your mom taught you well. <laughs> yeah, she taught me well. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but sometimes this sensitivity doesn't help, you know. You forget uh, yourself. You, you think about others too much sometimes. But in general, coming back to, to what we were talking, I think it took me five years to after the graduation to, to start doing what I really wanted or just to realize uh what i want to do what is my path and uh, yeah i worked for before that for five years i was working um, as a product designer for house of naive brand designing some fashion accessories working with craftsmen i don't know different stuff and i appreciate all that experience and i can definitely use and i am using all of it in my practice today but yeah i don't know what was the reason probably i was just 
simply too young and uh, I, I wasn't focused uh, what I want to achieve. How was it? Because it happened a bit to me also, not in the same way. Of course, everybody has the same thing or has a different experience. But but how was your process to do so? It was because um, how I mean, you said five years or four years, what so it's more mm -hmm. or less the same. Um, but you kept doing, um, let's say, a, a statically uh, a line of the projects that you do. I, I, I was just, I think that there's a, a, a clear language that you try to talk as a designer. Is, yeah. is that was conscious or, or was just like, as you say, very well educated? Uh, no, I think, um, well, I think I discovered my my language at the Design Academy, my, my topic. And uh, so I used the same theme in different uh, uh, practices, uh, like, I don't know, I did some jewelry design, then some pottery design, and everything had the same topic where I used the the, the body as a as a tool to 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 define the the shapes the the functions and so on um yeah so i think it was good that i didn't lose uh, my 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 self initiative initiated projects slowly i i did something for my for myself uh for this uh, like um, some cultural funds uh, in lithuania helped a lot that i could apply and do some project and so on but i still i couldn't live from that um so i did also a bunch of other things and uh, at that time there, there were there was no platform there was no design scene in lithuania where i could do uh, I don't know, critical or or I don't know more experimental design or collect collectible design. Uh, th there was no such a thing. So now it's really different. Yeah, I can I can say that I can fully express and do what I want. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. It was I don't know many years of experimentation and like just i don't know doing some re like practice based research in a way and then now i can combine all my experience and and i don't know continue because you what you say is that your your practice is defined as research through practice <laughs> I mean, I do like that, but since you're a PhD, I will uh, I, I will ask you, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you simply. Uh, you know, when I when I write about um, my thoughts in my practice, or like I describe my my way of working and uh, my observations, then everyone is like. Um, uh not like amazed but they they like what i write basically <laughs> but when i try to use theory <laughs> they say you know mm, the theory is uh, like um it's another thing <laughs> no no it's like uh, it's not that you are ruling but the theory is ruling yeah you know? yeah so so you are you're like a auto ethnography phd uh style definitely <laughs> i like definitely. it i mean i think that but i think that it's it's something that we probably learned a lot in, in design academy also or at least i did um which is this idea of studying yourself and understanding yourself and and helping yourself by reading uh but not on the following the theory but also to understand how you can actually do better your practice yeah and and i'm curious because you know that i'm also doing a PhD. um when you do, so do you see yourself differently when you do design objects, when you create, or when you do uh, your uh, more academical research part, or how how is Maria divided, or is not divided at all, and it it happens naturally because you're a brilliant designer. 
Uh, no, it's uh, it's only one, Maria. <laughs> actually, um, yeah. At, at the beginning of the of my PG, I was kind of naive. I thought that um, from now on, I'm gonna read a lot, and um, and then afterwards, uh, <laughs> I'll realize what I have to do. <laughs> but uh, it was not. <laughs> It was not working this way. It's just, uh, just uh, when I finally did something tangible, and I tried to explain what it means, uh, how I, how I approach it. Then I started that. I don't know. I then I saw that something is happening also in the in the in the um, theory side, yeah. uh, and. Uh, no, basically, I just uh, I just go to the workshop. I do something there. Then I have like bunch of ideas, and then I go back and I, I write something. Um, and then it's just interesting how it works. Sometimes you start writing and you you have no idea what you want to say, uh, but uh, but somehow like you see that in the text. Uh, uh, different thoughts are connecting together, and then I don't know. You you get a, a piece of uh, work somehow, yeah. suddenly. Like, and you have the idea, and I don't know. It's just either you're following your professional intuition, as my supervisor is saying, or or I don't know. Just this kind of a ability to, to connect uh, different um, aspects into one idea. Or like not different aspects, but different experiences and to combine it with a, the with a theory the, 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 that you read. And uh, yeah, I started to enjoy it. At the, the last year of <laughs> my PhD, that. I started to enjoy it. And I, I wish it would, would last longer. But I unfortunately, I have to give my paper back like give my paper quite soon okay yeah and would you say that your professional intuition let's say it, it's something that you gained also as you gained in design or is it, it's a, a different process because for me it's completely different yeah that's what i'm saying it it, 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 it is has no has nothing to do with but just wondering if you have a different. Uh, <laughs> you you mean you don't have any professional intuition, <laughs> no, or you in, don't use it? In ter in terms of the the PhD, for me it's different than you. So I I do have an idea of what I want to say, and, okay. and 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 I actually put it easily in paper. Then my problem is to 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 structure my thoughts in a way that it are that they are understood. <laughs> so, but but. But I don't have an intuition on 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 how to, and it it's it's a it's a awful process, let's say, for me. So it's easy the process of okay, I want to say that because I I've been reading and and so I do completely a different process actually. I also don't have a practical PhD, my it's a fully theoretical, so I don't know if that that it's related or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Um, I guess. I had this intuition. It saved my my ass many times, <laughs> I guess. Um, but then, in, in years of your practice, you 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 learn how to use it in a I don't know in a very rational way somehow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I forgot what I wanted to say. It's okay. It's okay. So I wanted to ask you because um, you said that you're creator, your PhD, and and you did this uh, amazing exhibition on Lithuanian design. And here it comes the the, the question that I told you before of Rafael, um, because now you talk about intuition, and I think that there is something about uh, understanding without knowing, no, in, within intuition or like with. Uh, and Rafael asked me. Um, Ask her uh, which object would represent better uh, what Lithuanian design is, and then here I leave you with the problem <laughs> because I think. Wait a minute. <laughs> no. 
What would be the objects that represent Lithuanian design? Yeah. Or which one of the objects that you had in the exhibition would actually... Ah, in the exhibition. Okay, okay. Mm, well, it wasn't so much about Lithuanian design, first of all. <laughs> ah, so blame Raphael. Because uh, it was, uh, yeah, mainly historical furniture and how how can you read them through the perspective of contemporary design okay. and the historical furniture they were everywhere the same you know we had the same fashions in whole europe at least um uh, you know better than that because you studied that i have no idea you could lie to me yeah. perfectly there now well but we had one uh, lithuanian designer from we had his object from 20s another from 60s okay. he had a long beautiful life uh, and he he studied actually in france uh, at the beginning of 20th, 20th century and it's interesting how he worked he was a like a carpenter basically uh, and he i don't know he 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 had his workshop, wood workshop, he worked with wood and uh, well <clears throat> at that time Art Deco was in fashion so yeah you could say that his works are related with, with this style but then he used some Lithuanian folk motifs in, in the Art Deco theme and then he was taking let's say a plank of, of wood and um, and then just before designing something he would look at the the material and try to understand what the material is uh saying or what is the potential of the material mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's why i don't know it's like a nice combination of craft and um and which object and was design it? which objects were uh, like some chairs. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Jonas Propolanus. Oh my god, I'm I not can... going to be able to, 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 to write that down. <laughs> but but let's accept that some chairs. Okay. Yeah, it's like one leg with well, one chair with three legs and then uh, some sort of a Bauhaus inspired uh, ah, chair yeah, for see, kids. I see, I see. I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, he could represent Lithuanian design. Uh, and nowadays, oh? of course, uh, there's other designers in Lithuania. And before you talked about your relationship with institutions uh, mm -hmm. and how they, they are helping or they help you, let's say in that case specifically, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit about that? Because uh, I'm, I'm curious how, how you as a designer that you arrived from abroad, as you said, it helped you to have this label of uh, studying at uh, Design Academy whatsoever, but how you relate to the experience of design in Lithuania in institutions? Do you, do you talk to them directly? Do they contact you? Um, do they help you enough so you can actually live from it? You said no. So how does that work? How do you see it works, actually? You mean at the moment? Yeah. What's what's my relation? Because you said well, that it, really... it improved, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. Uh, well, I first of all, I really enjoyed working uh, with the museums, and uh, I I see the tendency that I'm not interested in the design so much anymore. Ooh. But more, I'm like interested how the history is preserved, or what are we going to do with the things that are preserved, and how how can you how can you tell something about it that it would be interesting? Uh, and they are quite open. We have great exhibitions going on actually in different museums. <clears throat> Since I guess we don't have that much heritage uh, yes. since we had Soviet yeah, uh, yeah. occupation and everything was destroyed. 
uh, or not preserved or stolen. So we, we really, I don't know, we use our creativity to do our best with the, with the little we have. Okay. So that's why the quality of the exhibitions are quite good uh, in, the, in, the, I don't know, in the international perspective, I would dare to say that. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, well, since I, I teach in the, design, in the art academy, um, I'm kind of, I don't know, I care how, how the future designers are taught. And uh, I see that I can, I don't know, I can do some changes as a young mentor. And uh, I don't know, everyone appreciates uh, me there uh, in the collective, let's say. And then uh, what else? Well, I can fully function and express myself and I can do what I want. Uh, since there are two things that I'm a PhD student um, and also there is a gallery Verte, that represents my work so I can be busy with my own stuff basically and all and the you boring that stuff you, you, so basically you are doing a PhD and teaching in an art academy so you will be an art yes. PhD yes do you, do you think that that uh, because i will be an architecture phd just letting you know <laughs> and none of us okay. is either an artist or an architect so I, I i think that that do you think that you will change your label afterwards you will become an artist no i'm gonna <laughs> stick to design <laughs> <laughs> no no but th that's true i i, I gain a lot um uh, being all the time with the with the artists that are yeah. doing uh, the PhD and uh, seeing everything from different perspectives. Uh, For sure. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that. I don't know. Uh, what else? Uh, what else about the institutions? I don't know. I was wondering, for example, um, because you say that in terms of museums, it is quite uh, is good. Actually, you said that it's very nice. Um, what about? Uh, in terms of the culture of what is design in a generic way, so not focusing in one or institution or in another, like mm. how people see design or how people see, in your case, collectible design or historical design, however you want it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that it well, makes a big difference. In that actually. case, well, if we are talking about design politics in Lithuania, it's <laughs> uh, it's quite sad. It's quite sad. Okay, okay. Here, I like, the... I like this. Let's talk about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm, I, I mean, I don't care about it. I just uh, dropped it <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> uh, but I mean, for example, we have design association. Oh, you have one. And, okay. uh, and uh, the head uh, is like uh, the head of this association. He's, uh, I think he's an architect. Yeah, it happens. In general. And then um, he's the... Do you say an English technocrat? Yes, of course. Okay. So I would call him a technocrat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were uh, we were having some discussion um, in one gathering uh, and uh, and they were surprised that they're not getting uh, funding from cultural council. Council of Culture, I don't know how to say. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I said, uh, well, yes, but then you have to do, you have to apply with some projects that are culture right. orientated. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like, uh, I don't know. But since they treat design in a very conservative way, that is something, I don't know, it should have... That basically it's a, it's all about the product and uh, about the commercial uh, mm -hmm. market and so on and so on. And uh, I don't know, this guy was surprised that uh, about my comment that uh, well, because he was like drawing something something on the board about like different fields about design and so on. And and I said, but what about the cultural meaning of yeah, design which is uh, simply like that which is and, quite important apparently no. 
Or not for yeah. them. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I didn't get any <laughs> any answer back, you know. He, he was just like, like not even taking it into uh, consideration. So that's the politics of design. <clears throat> but I mean, I just don't care about it and uh, well some years ago when younger people were involved and in, i don't know organizing design week for example in vilnius uh, it was way more interesting and some <clears throat> i don't know nice things were happening but in recent years it just became i don't know boring and nothing special and yeah but uh, but th there are different, uh, th how to say, mm, different places where you can function and do something. You know, you don't have to be related with general politics, let's say. Oh, of course, of course and, not. But it, it sometimes it helps that, that, well, or at least when we talked, you said that we talked a lot about design in, in the net when we were in the Netherlands. It really helps mm -hmm. if the culture and the politics of design are understood as something valuable. True. Because uh, it, it creates a network, and, and I guess I mean, do you have a, a a network there in Lithuania that goes beyond, let's say, the politics? So you have uh, friends, you have uh, uh, colleagues, PhDs that are interested in that. I guess no. E yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, we have quite uh, active um, architecture scene. Okay. With some with some architects that are, I don't know, um, organizing some lectures uh, at some cultural events. Uh, uh, so I don't know. I I see it more that you can function somewhere in between of of art, uh, design, and architecture. And do you function it's, with them? So it's, it's a collaborative practice or it's like an individual practice yeah. that you take yourself? It's a collaborative um, practice, definitely. Yeah, but uh, it's it's my my own problem. I could I could be involved in uh, There's no problem here. Many There's problems. no problem. <laughs> no, I mean, um, let's say that's my choice. Ah, it's not exactly. my problem, that's my ah, choice. Yeah, then I understand. That's my choice that I prefer to be a one man band and uh, do everything by myself and uh, just mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, like since I was creating all those exhibitions, mm -hmm. I, I in a way I'll I wasn't doing for myself that much uh, for my my own projects. So I really want to focus on that, and uh, uh, you cannot do everything. No, of course, you have of course to not, choose of course one or another. So I could be culturally more active or re relevant, or giving uh, some uh, I don't know value for the society. But I I I I, I prefer to to. To be egoistic at the moment and um, to, in a way, I don't know, to 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 prove what I want to say or. Well, I have to say, I I started to enjoy writing. Yeah. Uh, you said so, yeah. so, like I remember my very first article. It was horrible. <laughs> horrible <laughs> the article or horrible the process. The process and the oh. and the article as well. But it was published. And, unfortun and unfortunately, it's published. It's in English. <laughs> it's in Lithuanian. Oh, yeah. um, I will look for you. Anyways, but the the second uh, well, since we we did the publication uh, in the, after the after the exhibition in the museum. Uh, I have my second publication over there, and it's way better. And uh, now I have some, like, let's say, uh, commissions to do some interviews for some local magazine, oh, nice. cultural magazine. 
So I'm gonna interview some important people for the Lithuanian design scene. Um, so I see my role there somehow. Yeah, that I that I can spread a critical idea while writing. Nice. I, I would not have expected that change eh, with you. To be honest, eh, to really like it, it's it's very nice to hear. I mean, I hope that at certain point I will have the same interest. Um, <laughs> but I could not see it from you. I mean, I, I because I do see that you have a huge uh, intimate relationship with materialization. And so I, I yeah, I, I, I don't know. Writing sounds, uh, um, are you going to write in English? Uh, yes, well, the last article is also in English. I have to send you the publication. Yes, do, do, please. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm curious because you I asked you about um, about the reference outside your practice, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and the one you sent me, um, it is actually uh, uh, Spotify. Uh, how you call this collection? I guess is the memory of with John Galliano of Mar Mason Margiela. First, I will put it in the background. It will not be here much, but I'm, I'm curious to understand why you chose this. Uh, well, it's just something that firstly bumps into your mind. But uh, since uh, in my... I kind of revisited that again. Uh, research, I... Referencing myself. I think and I, I don't know, I write about a relation um, with, the, with, the, with the clothing and with the textile and objects. And I kind of relate uh, what kind of relation you have with your clothing, the garments, and what kind of relation you have with the objects. And I don't know about all the layering and so on and so on. Friends, the loose. meaning of the intimacy Sometimes in so one in a way i touch fashion world or top, like which uh, history of fashion and, then, and there, john galliano he is uh, well known for his historical references in uh, his collections and uh, Maison Margiela, uh, like this uh, fashion house, allows him to be very experimental. Uh, I don't know, I think he can express himself there very well. Um, and I just, uh, I cannot say that I appreciate uh, a lot uh, what he does design wise okay. i don't think that i have the, the knowledge and um, i don't know maybe my taste is different let's say or i'm too practical <laughs> uh, but the way he but the way he talks it's amazing you know, it's just, the way he talks he explains and he he is referencing and uh, it's just uh, it's wonderful it's uh, pure inspiration right how passionately you can talk about your own uh, creative work and the inspiration is behind how he is man have managed to express himself it's it's a it's a beautiful i mean i i, I could not listen to all of it but yeah but it's a talent yeah yeah it is it is it's definitely a talent it's uh, it's crazy but i was not expecting from him to talk like that. yeah yeah exactly also the way that that uh, this podcast uses or i guess that you can call it podcast uh, that it uses the the sound on the background is is, is something very nice i mean like the, the referencing on, on like the rhythms and then and suddenly the music and how he makes the stops and then I, I mean it's probably very well planned all these things I mean of course but it I, I to be honest I will will listen to it definitely I will definitely listen to it but I, I, I thought when because when you were saying I want to write and I want to be critical and whatsoever and and then you I, I remember this reference that you said because when I was listening to it I I really felt wow he's trying to say something he has something to say that is stronger than the dresses. And I thought, do, do you have something to say, Maria? <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I think I'm better in writing than talking. 
Uh, that's what you say. I don't believe it. <laughs> I mean, I think that he, this is a written, edited uh, podcast. I mean, I'm sure that he wrote it down to be powerful in that sense. Could be, could be. But then know, in the it, interviews, like, he's also so yeah, fluent. Yeah, it's true, it's true. But do you think, I don't know, I mean, yeah, maybe. Because cause with, with, the, with the writing, let's say, I I I would call it that I'm sculpting, you know? Okay. I write something and I'm just <laughs> like working with it, like with a dough, you know? <laughs> and yeah, just uh, sometimes I get questions, uh, why, like, uh, why do I write in Lithuanian? Because I had this option to write in English as well. But now, well, I remember myself when I came back after the master, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about design in Lithuanian. Yeah, it still happens and to now me. I, and now I really enjoy how I can use some really juicy language <laughs> <In Lithuanian. laughs> to describe, to, to describe my, my thoughts. Like, I, I really enjoy that. Uh, uh, literature site somehow. Yeah, and, uh, how, I mean, definitely like the power. And the, how many adjectives you can put and uh, uh, play with the sounds. And uh, I wouldn't be able to express myself in English that way. But the way that yes. you talk about uh, writing, it sounds the way that you would talk about your embracing touch project, to be honest. <laughs> No, I mean it's it's a bit bad. It's like how I manage, how I you like you you are you. <laughs> could be, could be. I, I don't mean, know. at the end, you're writing is also a, a material to be formed, right? I mean, it's somehow. I mean, it's just different tooling, but uh... yeah, I don't know. I, I... To be honest, I, I approach it completely different. <laughs> so far, eh? so far, you've been doing it for longer than I do. And I have to say that I, I would not be able to write it in Spanish um, at all, um, for sure. Yeah? No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I, and, and I know that the, the probably my 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 skills in uh, knowing the nuances of the language are, are, are higher in, in Spanish, for sure. Uh, um, but I would, I would, I will definitely try to, to write something in that way. I would definitely try. Yeah. Don't you see that your embracing touch is is is, is also a text-driven uh, option? And I'm saying embracing touch, but I also say I also mean like the ones that you did with your elbows and knees and and all these projects that you you did that it's actually forming matter with your own uh, like I don't know action-based because you didn't. The way you put, the way you write, it, it's also very similar to I envision that you work on your hands. Could be, could be. Well, in the in the, in the perfect scenario. And yeah, of course, uh, of course. Idealistically, you're not crying every ten minutes. That 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 happens also, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it would be nice to have a like a very nice continuation um, from your like tangible practice into writing. Yeah. But you don't see it happening. <laughs> At some point, we'll see. We'll see in the end. And maybe it's a, it's difficult to, for me to judge, right? That, that's something that some some someone else has to read or see and say. Okay, so just send me the text, and I will. I will uh, 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 we can do a second one, a second version of this, and I will say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, I think it's nice. I I read uh, because from the people that we studied together. I to be honest, I, I researched all of the ones that they were doing the PhDs, uh, so I, I looked the names and and I read a bit of what they wrote. Uh, I just was mm. curious. I, it's it's nice. It's nice to do. Actually, it's a nice exercise. Uh, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't find anything from you that I could read. So, in focus. So, uh, let's do. I have another question to you. I don't know if you know what CCC means. I guess that you don't. CCC means actually it's a Catalan expression. Actually, maybe if I would write in Catalan, that would be easier for me than Spanish because it's it's the language that I express myself every day. But CCC means. Uh, uh, 
harvest broth uh, creative sort of sort of like that and it's the expression of like when you do a scientist like this pretty riches um, and you put something on it and then it grows that's the caldo da cultivo but actually caldo means broth and that's why i asked you uh, a question which is what is your favorite meal uh <laughs> Because for me, food, uh, and, and that's something that it comes to me, and, and uh, uh, I yeah, agreed with me, and Lucas also a bit. Um, so I wanted to, to know what is your favorite meal, which you said anything with seafood, which is a, a kind of a broad spectrum of life. And you said crepes. So I'm wondering, do, do crepes with seafood work together? <laughs> they could. They could. <laughs> Well, I, I had in mind them separately, but... Uh... <laughs> no, of course, of course. So what is your relation? So do you, how do you consider cooking food? Is, is it something, uh, Lucas reminded us that when he cooks, he's kind of the designer. Uh, he feels like that. I uh, um, talked about um, the relate the social relationship of cooking, that she, she is what she values most. So how you do mm -hmm. you have a relationship with cooking? Because I have a theory that all designers have somehow. So if you are the fourth one and say no, I will stop here. Um, do you like cooking? I'm very rational with food. Oh, wow. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, well, sometimes it happens that I lose myself. It's like I, I forget about it everything and i and i start to enjoy cooking but uh, in general it's uh, it's a waste of time for me <laughs> I'm sorry. here comes the <laughs> the lithuanian mentality the <laughs> against the mediterranean culture oh my god <laughs> so no cakes either no, because mean, you're I, very much I on cakes food. yeah i love cook uh, food and uh, I appreciate that, but I prefer when someone else is cooking. <laughs> okay, fine. That's fine. No, it's just... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the process itself is nice, but then you need to, to clean everything. To <laughs> okay, fine. But, <laughs> but let's say that that happens the same in your workshop, right? What do you mean? When, when you have to do a ah. piece on ceramics after you have to clean your molds or, or you just have somebody that cleans for you afterwards. Okay, but I already learned that uh, while being in the workshop, I can get uh, brilliant ideas. Of course, you can get those ideas while cooking, but I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't learned it yet. <laughs> Okay. No, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, a bad cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. It's, it's not about that. I I can I can do it. Uh, well, maybe since I live alone, um, maybe that's the reason. I don't know. I live alone. I'm very creative with my cooking. <laughs> mm, you see, you see. Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, you need to go and do the groceries, and then I don't know, just to think what you're gonna eat tomorrow, today, and the day after tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's just too much, too much. Okay, but you just were saying that actually, when you work, you can get get ideas. So mm -hmm. creativity for you. When does where is your best moment to create? Actually, because you said just now that it comes when you're working, but is, is that true? It's like, that's your favorite yeah. moment? It is, it is. Well, I get some abstract, let's say, idea or or like uh, direction that where I want to go just uh, on my free time, mm -hmm. going somewhere in the street and I don't know, thinking about something or like uh, laying in the beach. Uh, uh, but then when I start doing, I, I, I see what's happening, you know, uh, how my idea is uh, evolving and uh, what kind of, uh, you know, coincidences are happening and so on and so on. And so the result is totally different from what I was expecting at the very beginning, but this is what I enjoy. So I don't, I don't push anything. I, I just try to that everything goes naturally, mm -hmm. everything develops naturally. 
uh, and yeah, I'm just, uh, I don't know, seeing a material in my own hands, feeling it, um, thinking what it reminds me of, of, of what, how I can. I also, I enjoy talking with the, with the, with the uh, craftsmen a lot. Also, how they share their interests, passions, and then I combine the information I get from them with my own thoughts or what I read before. And then I, I get some interesting story, let's say. Uh, yeah, so definitely meeting some craft people. So it's very inspiring. What is the difference between an artist, a designer, and a craftsman for you? Because they are not conceptualizing. It's just uh, normal language of, of humans, you know? They are just uh, <laughs> sharing their thoughts simply and not, like, complicating it. Or they're not trying to sound uh, in more intelligent than they are. And, uh, I don't know, just being humble. And, um, and what is the difference between artist and designer? Well, very simple. Designer is doing uh, functional things. Ooh, yoy, yoy. What is a function? No, I mean, but <laughs> in, in a very broad uh, meaning. Okay. Like being functional, it means that it's... Uh, It has agency. Okay. That I can understand. But it, in that sense, that's creativity comes in all of these languages. So whether you're a craft, whether you're an artisan, whether you're a designer. Definitely. And what is creativity Definitely. for you? Because you said that it comes to me when, when I work, but what it actually mm -hmm. means? Mm. I would say it's an ability to to express your sensitivity and observations in a certain theme and also to do some ing your engine ingenu ingenuity it's the word ingen ingenuity <laughs> yes okay because i so would you consider that everybody can be creative? Because that's the the, the, the the topic that I hate when people say, no, because I'm not creative, blah, blah, blah. So would you consider that? Yeah, I, I think everybody can be creative. Just to... Yeah, you, you basically, you need some experience how to use it or how to make this creativity uh, Functional, somehow, like productive. Productive, right? Do you agree? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm very. I'm, I'm, I'm researching, Maria. I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> like, so I think that creativity means it, it's a capacity of the human being. So I think that to say that nobody had that you can don't you're not creative. I think that you don't understand what it is. Just that simple as that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it actually is, but I know that it's a human capacity, or at least that's mm -hmm. that's how I perceive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know that there's some people that have trained this capacity better than others, uh, just by experience, and, and probably intuition in that sense comes by experience as well. So what is the relationship between intuition and creativity? I'm not sure. Uh, but it's there. I mean, definitely it's there. Uh, because you talked about before mm -hmm. with intuition and, and, and when you were talking also about intuition, do you, do you think that you can be more creative in that sense or more intuitive with making or you are already more creative and intuitive when writing right now? Well, definitely. Well, while making. Okay. And do you think yeah, it's because you've made a lot? I'm just starting. I'm just starting as a writer. 
No, but a lot of people say that when you you just start, you can be very creative, you know, because there is this uh, ingenuity that that has no borders and no limits. Uh, and then while you know, you get more limitations just by knowing. So that could that could be a possibility. Um, or or you are a radical that knows what borders to break, and therefore I don't know. I agree. I agree. More you know, more restricted you become somehow, right? Sometimes or scared to do or that you understand that you're not doing anything uh, uh, mind-blowing. <laughs> but that's something that I don't know. <laughs> I think that I lost a long time ago already, but <laughs> the mind-blowing. No, but I mean, you, you need to believe in what you do, right? Do you? I don't know. So what's what's your motivation then? Keep improving. Maybe you don't need to know. Like I don't know. I don't want to be the pessimistic guy here, but yes, I mostly don't believe very much in what I do. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think. I that think it, you. No, I think you. No, no, don't say that. Just keep that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you were saying, but just keep that. Yeah. No, you can say it. You can say it. No, I just uh, wanted to joke that maybe you know too much. No, definitely not. But, but it's true that I think that it goes with the people, you know, like I think that it's the same with creativity. I'm more comfortable doing creativity when, I, when I'm in limitation than when I'm like in a full mm -hmm. free um so i think i'm more creative actually doing things that i don't know how to do personally but also because i fear less of what i know let's say so but i also i'm, I'm sure that people can perceive it differently and that's why but it's powerful about creativity and uh, i think and, and i don't know i mean i totally agree that for the creativity you need some limitations or obstacles Otherwise, if you have total freedom, you, you, you like, yeah, it's so difficult to, to be, I don't know, it's not that it's difficult to be creative, but then, I don't know what I wanted to say, but basically, when you're limited, you are more creative. I will write that down. <laughs> Maria, but a PhD student, when you're limited, you're more creative. Cool. <laughs> Cited. <in. laughs> Stop it. <laughs> no, no, but I think it's true. I mean, I, I definitely think it's true. I think that limitation comes with with the, the ability, to be honest, creativity for me is the ability to to mix things that are within certain limitations and produce new outcomes. So if that is the ability, as Poincaré pointed out, I am fine with it. Um, who would you consider like an example of creativity? Do you think that there's somebody? It doesn't need to be famous. It can be a very simple thing. An example of the creativity. Or a person that you would consider he's very creative, I would consider, or a person that or or a job that needs of a lot of creativity or anything. Well, I think that simply the creativity can be the way how you solve a problem. Definitely. Any kind of it can be the most domestic problem, but uh, you can use your creativity, right? I, I hope so. I mean, I, I generally solve my domestic problems with very little creativity, but, <laughs> but I try to, to be honest. I really try to. Yeah, I know too many creative people. Just pick one. Cannot say one. Oh, what? Are you afraid? <laughs> Nobody will listen to this, Maria. It's just for me. Just <laughs> you and me. <laughs> no, I, I, I cannot say. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I can... okay, fine, fine. I will not push you. Do you think that it's um because of this uh, fear of saying a name but to not say another one 
Um, it reminded me a bit of a conversation that I had a while ago about the ego of, of the designer and and or the artist and 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 when we name drop things and and all these kind of things. Um, would you consider that design is a very fragile uh, in terms of your opinion? Uh, opinionated and, and you have very opinionated people and very little because they are very fearful mm. because in the practice of curation I think, you mean? well as a curator for example you choose people let's say right mm. Um, mm. and and since you are practicing as a curator but also as a as a designer I, I i i can see how you can position yourself and empathize with both situations right um would you consider that uh, that uh, as a opinionated uh, as a curator has to be, let's say? Uh... Well, in that situation, I care about objects, only them, somehow. Okay. I don't care about the personalities so much, and I I look how the objects that I choose for the exhibition they are relating to each other. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy in a way to do the decisions, what I'm choosing and what I'm not. And it's not about uh, your personal preferences somehow. Or... Not even in a political situation where the exhibition has to represent Lithuania in the Venice Viennale, just to say something. <laughs> mm. Yeah, everybody like, well, whoever is doing that decision should look at the proposal first. I should. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I even enjoy mixing stuff. Let's say taking some industrial design, like uh, personal practice. Uh, then I don't know some old new. Uh, cheap, expensive, I don't know, it's just uh, all objects are valuable, but just the matter how we look at it. And then and yeah, I, I, I fully agree with that. Uh, you say all objects are valuable. You, you made an exhibition on um, on how objects are read it also, like that's what you said before, no? I mean, in a historical perspective, but also like in, mm -hmm. in how they compose each other. You, what do objects tell us? Uh, well, I don't remember the name of, uh, of the, who was that guy? Anyways, but he said that we are uh, telling stories about ourselves using objects. And let's say it can be a historical object in the museum, but with that, you're telling something about yourself. About yourself as a designer or yourself as a creator? As a, or as a viewer? I don't know. As a... A human being or okay. no, no, but what I meant is like the position of the person that made the object, the one that chose the object, or the one that is seeing the object in the exhibition. The one who is seeing. The okay, object. okay, okay, nice, nice. But also, of course, of course, the curator and the researchers helping yeah, to yeah. put it together. To, to, to... Yes, yes, definitely. But then when you look at the objects, let's say you. You are amazed about something, and you are telling to your friend about what you saw. You you kind of you are telling something about yourself. Uh, no, but it's just it's interesting to observe. Let's say the object is mass produced, but then it is it's used in a certain way, or you see that it's being uh, appreciated and used for a very long time, or it's it's being uh, I don't know touched in certain places or it, it's being um, it, it was uh, hidden for some reason protected or um, i don't know it's just um, yeah so so many layers for example in the museum it was fun to watch uh, what kind of preferences the people that work in the museum what 
what kind of preferences they have uh the i don't know the the head of the repository right uh, say she doesn't like uh, gilded uh, objects just like that it's like okay just yeah. like that <laughs> okay fine and you're like, like okay so i will put a gilded object la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, just the, it, it releases you, yeah, yeah, it definitely. gives you freedom, you, you, you understand that you, you can do, you can make some subjective decisions as well, like nothing is uh, objective there, right? Uh, also, what kind of objects uh, the conservators are choosing? Of course, they have to, let's say, a curator things of, of certain objects uh, and they, of certain exhibition, and then uh, the conservators have to do that job, but, but they have the opinion as well, and they, they can sometimes even refuse and say that it's impossible and take some, something easier or more challenging for them or I don't know, meaningful, and so on and so on. So, yeah, well, it, it depends from which perspective you're talking. If it's a maker, viewer, user, the one who preserves, uh, who tells the story. I don't know. And uh, I think a, a designer can combine many of these things. And I just found the way what I, what I was saying before that I'm not interested in design. So much anymore because I saw my role as a practicing designer in the museum, uh, dealing with the with the with the with the historical objects, let's yeah. say at the exhibits. Because uh, you can say certain things being a historian. And uh, you can tell the story like from different perspective when you are the maker. Or you, you have the experience uh, with, with the making or appreciating the objects somehow. I think that you should, I was, uh, I was picturing uh, an exhibition of the different Marias with the same object. I think that that would, that would make a lot of sense. I mean, no, I mean, I mean, it would happen the same to me. I mean, I haven't practiced as a creator, so I would not have that version. But I would definitely, I think that that would be very interesting also. Because mm -hmm. I think that as a designer, you have the skills to do that, especially because also you practice. And, and but, but to see, like to be able to separate that, I that would be very nice to see. Very nice to see why you made, like, just to say, yeah, uh, uh, the mirror that you made with Vitas or or the the last puff, I, don't know, I guess it's a puff of textile. I don't know how you call that blob of textile patches. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. But to see it from the different perspectives of Maria, no? Okay. Would you have different, you would have different approaches, right? Or not? Would you, if you had to write an article it would it? be. It would be, I think it would be the same approach as just different angles. Hey, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> but there would be different angles. That's why I think that they, these nuances, they, they have to be very interesting, actually. I, I, I think it would be very nice to see. I mean, I think that that's why Raphael also asked you what would be the, the, the object that you would choose from that exhibition, because it's the nuance of, of, of having chosen them all or participated in choosing them all, why would you choose certain kind of object? And of course you said, well, the only one that is from a Lithuanian guy that is actually famous and has more than 20 years. But that's a very rational approach also. Because you had objects, I guess, mm -hmm. that from, from current practice of uh, Lithuanian. So that was a very curator uh, organized approach. Hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, I mean, it's been an hour and 30 minutes. I, I, I want to just first thank you for, for such a lovely conversation. I, I love talking to you. You know that uh, I'm really, w uh, uh, the, the phone is coming. The phone is coming. Uh, don't worry. You cannot see it in the camera. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you something. I, the same way I asked Raphael, uh, 
uh, and Lucas and Anaya, would you like to participate one day, actually, in a collective conversation? That would be something nice. Do you, what do you think about that? Uh, I would love to. Yeah? I'd love to. Mm -hmm. What do you think that it would happen? I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit scared, to be honest. <laughs> to put you all together in a conversation, I'm, I'm a bit scared. It's just a nice gathering. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, you have to be, of course, like we need some moderator. <laughs> yeah, definitely me. Don't you see me as capable to do that? I see you, definitely. Exactly, I agree. I completely agree. Uh, and if you, do, if you disagree, I, it doesn't matter because I will do whatever I want. That's why I. <laughs> But <laughs> that's how it happens. Um, and I wanted to ask you also, uh, um, so you know what Rafael asked you a question. Uh, Lucas mm -hmm. asked a question for Rafael. Uh, I asked a question for Lucas. And the next person that will be on Wednesday at 6, it will be Zeno, Zeno Franchini. Um, what would you like to ask Zeno? I mean, I, to be honest, as I said before, you're very lucky because you still know him. I think that Zeno will already not know the next person. So, so that will be a bit more challenging. Um, but since you know him, is there something uh, that you would like to ask him? Uh, okay, well, I remember his uh, projects at the Academy, but I have no clue what he is doing now, actually. So I would be curious if he finds his if he found his role as a designer in the city i can i can i think that i can answer for him even if he would say probably no i say yes um but, but that's something that it will be nice to see how he answers actually because i i know a bit of his projects i recently worked uh talked to him a bit uh we we did the project with him that we asked for his help uh with the project with lucas that we asked for his help and and I, I I've been following him actually. I really like what he did, he, what he does. Um, but yeah, I, I will ask him. I will ask him that. And and the other the last thing is actually, do you have something to ask me or not? Okay, so let's no. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can. You can. Mm. Do you think you you you'll make something for for your PhD project? No. No. For sure not. I mean, you 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 don't have to. I know, mm -hmm. but uh, no, no. The only thing you that won't I mean... explain yourself with uh, with some material, no. Um, most probably not. Um, the only thing that I've been. Uh, because uh, I will say it because nobody from my uh, my university will watch this. I didn't tell anybody yet, so it's fine. Uh, um, but I, I, the only thing that I would be curious to do actually is to create an activision. Mm. Because what I'm trying to talk about is not really about my personal practice. To me, I, I have a very differentiated approach in between what I like to do as a physical material approach than what I would like to investigate in that sense. So there. I see them very differently, even if in my head they are sort of connected. But creating an exhibition, not to use it as an investigative tool, so a research tool, but to use it to see if actually people would see the same things that I see within the the project that I would showcase. I think that mm -hmm. because for me, what is interesting and part of the research is about the intent of the design rather than the outcome. Um, and and I think that it would be nice also because I don't have such a huge, um, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I, I yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm a great designer in that sense to be able to to make a project for my PhD. But I see myself uh, sort of like gathering interesting projects and putting them together in mm -hmm. a room um, to be mm -hmm. able to kind of like label it as a design for sense making. Dot. That's my PhD about. Well, but that's quite a practical thing. Also, I, I, with that said, I'm not planning to do it. Eh? But it's the only thing that I saw myself no. um, that, that would make sense, so so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because doing myself something, it's 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 yeah, it's not in the it's not in my 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 mm -hmm. mind. I wanted to keep it mm -hmm. very 
very theoretical oriented, to be honest. Have some brain space. And objective in some sense. Right? Yeah, I would doubt that I can do anything that is objective in my life. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, so, so 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 to speak, I I want to do something that is not autobiographic in the in the sense of uh, understanding my own practice. But mm -hmm. I like the idea of um, taking the PhD more as a poetical exploration of a space that I consider that is part of design and, and mm -hmm. see how it works rather than a very theoretical objective approach. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, it's been, I'm doing it part time. It's been a year. So, uh, I have, uh, plenty of time ahead. So we'll see what it brings. Okay. okay. But Only it, the first year. It's, it's, it's been, uh, I think that in last March, la, no, la, yeah, I, I so I've been thinking and doing a lot of, of work before, but uh, like officially speaking, it's it's one year. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah of... so a lot of things I had, definitely for sure. For two years, I had no clue what I was doing actually. But that's funny because I have the opposite. Huh? I mean, I mean, I've been one year like enrolled, let's say, but I've been like, the last six years knowing what I wanted to do. So. I just been the last six years trying to understand it. So now what I'm just doing it, formalizing it in a way that the PhD people like it, mm -hmm. which is this kind of elite group that only allows you to be inside if you do it like they like it, and and, and, and yeah, whatsoever. <laughs> but 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 yeah, I mean I, I I have a different approach. I completely I need to know. I need to learn their tools to be able to tell what I what I want to say. That's the process that I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. I will let you know if I write something interesting. Otherwise, I will just put a pseudonym or something and that's it. <laughs> no, no, it's already there. I mean, it's, it's already in the process, the first article to be read. So and they are like uh, right now, like criticizing it, I guess. Some magazine. Mm. Send me definitely afterwards when you can. I can share it with you already. I mean, it doesn't matter. Design is not really like a, a proper PhD anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we are not investigating life or death things. So Yes, but we have to accumulate uh, new knowledge. Or evaluate knowledge that exists uh, in the pers <laughs> in new perspectives. I mean, I think I think it's fine. I, I will share it with you. I can share it now. It's uh, for the first time, so it's. Um, I'm just. Uh, I'm just curious to 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 do the second one, which will be a bit more, the intent of my PhD. The first one is more like, here we are in this uh, scenario, and this is more or less the, the thing that I want to study. This is the perspective of design that I want to tackle, and this is why I think it's important. It's a bit of a state of the art uh, situation. Do you see that the difference I'm just realizing now of my uh, my light and your darkness? It's crazy, huh? Yeah, you <laughs> saw the changes. It's getting dark. It's, yeah. Uh, it's 8.30. It's 8.30 there, yeah. And here it's 7.30. Yes. Yeah. It's getting dark. Here we still have a couple of hours. Anyway, nice. I just thank you very much. You don't have to leave the call, but I will. We can leave them, and then after we can say goodbye to each other. Uh, okay. Thank you for participating, and uh, believe me, I will try to gather all of these crazy guys and also the ones that you don't know uh, one day to to do some sort of talks. Uh, I don't know how I will manage, but yes, uh, it will happen. Um, it's been nice to see you again. Um, and thanks to the people that were here. Um, and I guess that see you on Wednesday with the Zeno. Uh, 